Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 17.4 RC, or Release Candidate. iOS 17.4 RC is out to developers and soon to public beta testers, and this should be the final version that's released to the public as long as there's no additional issues. We'll just be able to test it a little bit early, and we'll talk about when to expect the public release a little bit later. Now this update came in at 6.46 gigabytes on my 15 Pro Max. Anytime you go from a beta version to a final version, it's going to reinstall the whole OS. And this was released alongside a lot of other updates today. Some RCs, such as iPadOS 17.4 RC, VisionOS 1.1 Beta 4, tvOS and HomePod OS 17.4 Beta 5, macOS 14.4 Beta 5, no watchOS update just yet for some reason, and a bunch of older updates as well for iOS and macOS. Now, as far as the build number, let's go ahead and take a look at it. We'll go to settings, then we'll go down to general, then about. The build number is 21E217, and this should be the final version released to the public if there's no additional issues. If there are issues, we'll see iOS 17.4 RC2 a little bit later. Now, as far as new updates, there is no modem update going from beta four to the release candidate this time around. So no changes there. And the first thing they've updated is the hello screen with your profile picture. You can see I filmed this a little bit earlier to show you what it looks like. It just has your profile picture with the hello underneath, which changes through different languages. Now, as far as new features, well, this is a big one this time around, and it's full featured. What that means is there's side loading for the EU, although Apple doesn't mention it at all. What that means is there's side loading. You can install third party app stores, third party apps, and also you can use streaming apps as well. You can also set default browsers with more options where you could use browsers before, but now it can use different code other than what we have with Safari and WebKit. And there's also options for alternative in-app payment methods. This is in the EU only though, and this is to comply with European Union regulations. There's also new updates for contacts with payments and NFC as well. Now, as far as things we can see right away, well, there's new emoji in this update to bring us up to the latest Unicode standard. So if we go into messages, you'll see we have some new emoji here. So we have a mushroom, a lime, a phoenix, a broken chain, a head nodding up and down, a head turning left to right, and then some other options as well, such as a motorized wheelchair pointing to the right, as well as a walking stick for those that are visually impaired facing right, someone kneeling facing right. We had some of these before where they were facing left. Now you can pick the option you choose. There's 18 different people and body emojis with different face options for them as well. Now also something else they've updated in messages has to do with the businesses. So if you have a business and it can actually provide you information about your order status, flight notifications, fraud alerts, and other transactions you opt into through your text messages. So that's just with businesses. You'd have to be actually chatting with someone or ordering a product from them to see that. Another major change in this update has to do with battery health. Now, unfortunately, this is only on the 15 series phones. I've updated it on the 14 and we don't see it here, but I'll show you what the difference is. There's not really a reason Apple couldn't add this, but if we go in, you'll see that battery health has been changed. It now says normal. This is something I've been asking Apple to change for years. They've finally done it and you'll see it says battery health normal and then gives the actual maximum capacity and also has the cycle count right here. That used to be in the about section. It makes much more sense being here. Also with the iPhone 15 models, you'll see they're now good for 1000 cycles down to 80%. Before this was 500 cycles. So they've updated this for the iPhone 15 models in ideal conditions. So you could get a thousand cycles before you drop to 80%. So that's pretty great. Another major change has to do with podcasts. If we go into podcasts and maybe if you're watching or listening to this one, we'll go in, you can see we now have transcriptions here. So you can have full transcriptions and you can see all of it here. You can even search for it. So we could search for one person individually. It will find all of the different things they're mentioning, maybe iPhone. You can see that over and over where it can find that throughout what they're speaking about. Then you can jump right to that point and start listening to it. Not only that, it can work in multiple languages, English, Spanish, French, and German right now. So it can actually be read full search for, you can tap to play a specific point and you'll see it starts playing right there. So that's great. They've updated it, made it much easier to jump around and search just like you can with lyrics and music.
Also, they've sort of unified things at the bottom where it now says home. This has been changed across multiple apps, such as Apple Music as well. It now says home on the bottom instead of listen now. So I think that's a great update where it's pretty simple, but it's something that's unified across the whole OS. And also with this update, now if it recognizes music, it can be added to a playlist. So let me show you what I mean. If I play a song from this iPhone, so it recognized it right away. And if we go into it now, I thought we had this function before, but now we can add it directly to Apple music or Apple music classical in our playlists if we want to do that. So that's something Apple says is new in this update. However, I thought this was there before. Also, there's Beats Solo 4 support, it looks like, coming very soon to this update based off of some information my friend Steve Mosier found, and we should have that as well, so we can expect those soon. Siri also gets some major updates. If we go into our settings, go down to Siri and search, now we have an option for messaging with Siri, and under messaging with Siri, we can now have read messages in additional languages. This allows it to maybe come through and speak in English or German if someone is speaking to you there through Siri. So it can read it back in either language. You can add additional languages, and it can respond in a combination of even languages such as English and Hindi, depending on the primary language you use. So those are all new things in this update. Now there's also a new clock widget. It looks a little different than the one we already have. And if we press and maybe add a widget here, we'll scroll down to clock and we have a new one called city digital. So as we scroll over, you'll see it here. It's a little bit different. And this one actually responds as the time goes on throughout the day and we'll switch to a dark mode while I have dark mode enabled. It doesn't switch on its own, but again, it's based on time of day. So if I change it on my phone here, we'll just go into our settings and change the time of day. Date and time, we'll turn it off and maybe we'll make it 9 p.m. or so. So we'll change it to maybe 9 p.m. tonight, then go back and you'll see as we scroll over it switch to a dark mode. So it has a dark look to it now, again, based on time and when sunset is where you live. So that's something they've updated a little bit. Let me switch it back to automatic though. One of our more recent features within settings is under face ID and passcode. If we go into this, enter our passcode, and if we scroll down, we have stolen device protection. There's a new option in here with iOS 17.4 to require the security delay away from familiar locations or always. So you can update it, whatever you'd like. I have it away from familiar locations, which just makes it a little easier if you want to turn it off, or maybe you need to have it serviced at an Apple store. Also, there's some updates for the phone calls. Now, call identification will display Apple verified business names, logos, and department names when available. So if someone's calling you and there's that information already caught, whether it's in your contacts or Apple's pushing it through their servers, it will now show you that information. So if Apple's calling you, it should give you that information as well. Additionally, in Apple Wallet, there's an update. If we go into the wallet app within wallet, you'll see that we have a virtual card number. If you have an Apple cash card, you can now use an Apple cash card to make secure online purchases with Safari autofill when Apple pay is not available. You can learn more about it and actually use it for whatever reason. The support page is not available, but that's something they've added in this update. There's also a new option for Apple pay as well for analytics. If we go into our settings, Go down to privacy and security, scroll to the bottom where we have analytics and improvements. We have a new option to improve Apple pay. It's turned off by default, but if you want to enable it, you can. Also CarPlay gets a big update in this update. And we've seen this throughout different cars already with the betas, where if you're using Apple CarPlay, you can now have Apple maps on your center screen or switch it over to your instrument cluster. This is something Apple added with the previous beta and cars such as BMWs have already been able to see this. Certain cars may not have it enabled already, but if you do, it should be able to be able to switch between either the center screen or instrument cluster. Also, we don't have watchOS 10.4 updates yet for beta five or the the release candidate. However, within the code of iOS 17.4, we're also seeing some new fall colors such as light blue, ocean blue, pink, raspberry, soft mint, and others. So we should have some of those coming out soon, probably with new cases and much more. Also, one thing we thought Apple was going to fix has to do with the EU. If you're in the EU and maybe you search for an app, whether that's here within Spotlight Search and you go to install it here or just install it from the App Store, you're greeted with a new verification screen. You'll see it looks like this and it says verify the information before installing. Apple supposedly said they're going to fix this. However, in the RC, it's not fixed yet and people are still seeing this in the European Union. Also, Apple removed a few things where they haven't brought it back in this update. So one of the things they removed was the wider 
bar here at the bottom for the address bar, and they also removed a stopwatch live activity that hasn't been brought back yet. If you went into the clock app, started the stopwatch, slide home. If you have a dynamic island, it went up to the live activity. Hopefully they'll bring that back, maybe with iOS 17.5. Now, as far as bug fixes, Apple did fix the notification bug. It's still fixed in this update. You can see here, it's not jumping all around. Also, the stock wallpaper bug has been fixed. So if you just shut off the phone, it depends on how you have it set, but it now responds, whether it's light mode or dark mode, just like you would expect. They seem to fix some airdrop issues, and they've also specifically mentioned that they fixed issues with contact pictures being blank in Find My. If we go into Find My, you'll see that I have some that are blank, but that's because they haven't filled them out. But if they have, they actually have those contact pictures. They've also fixed an issue if you're a dual SIM user where the phone number changes from primary to secondary and is visible to a group they have messaged. So that's something that they've changed where they've updated it and it should work properly now. Now there are still some bugs that are there. The wallpaper dimming bug is still there. If you watch the wallpaper, it will sort of desaturate. And I've seen this over and over where I go to the home screen and it desaturates. You can see that in the upper right and left. Sometimes it's worse than others for some reason. Sometimes it doesn't do it, but it seems to still do it from time to time. Also, many people had emoji stickers disappearing. That seems to be fixed. So if we go into our stickers here, you'll see they pop up just like you would expect. There's no other bugs so far, it seems like, and overall, it seems like it's pretty solid. If we go into the release notes, they should be in the feedback app by now. If not, they're on the public facing website, but let's take a look. You'll see we do have beta four, but not the most recent. Let's go into that. And within the release notes, you'll see that we still have some known issues with default browser choice screen might not show up when intended and apps requiring certain managed entitlements might not install or show an error. This would be in the EU. And then also the app store, they've resolved a bunch of issues. There's some new features with CarPlay that I mentioned before. There's also some new updates with things for developers, HomeKit, Maps has resolved some issues and much more. So this is great to see them continually update this, giving us more and more information. And you can see the Siri update here where it can use a combination of English and Hindi, like I mentioned before. Lots of great updates in iOS 17.4. As far as the overall performance, so far it seems smooth, just like any of the other previous betas. This has actually been pretty good with ProMotion and everything else. In fact, just using it in general seems to be what you would expect. Nice and fast, everything reacts like you would expect. Scrolling through different apps, things just seem to respond pretty well, and this update has been fairly stable in general. As far as overall heat, well, the heat is a little bit intense just because it's installing a whole update and the back is a little bit warm, but nothing too hot or alarming. That's completely normal when you're installing updates and it's processing in the background. As far as battery life, well, I've only used the betas. This has only been out a couple hours, but using them has been pretty good. Again, we have 100% battery health with 117 cycles. And yesterday, I had three hours and 29 minutes of screen active time, three hours and 26 minutes of screen idle time. I used about 75% of my battery. Today, one hour and 40 minutes, and I've only used, well, about 31%. So it seems to be improving as we go on throughout the day. Typically I can get through a day without a problem with about 20 to 30% left at the end of the day. Most people that have used this in my YouTube community poll that we've talked about every weekend has said that it's been pretty good for them overall. Now, as far as if you should install iOS 17.4 RC, well, if you've been wanting to try it, this should be the final release unless they fix additional bugs before it's released to the public. So definitely you could try it. Just make sure you have a backup. As far as iOS 17.4's release date, well, based on having the RC today, if we don't have an RC2 by the end of the week, I would expect the final release to be on March 4th. Typically it's on a Monday, so probably this following week we'll see it on the 4th. Also, iOS 17.5 beta one will soon follow after that, probably on the fifth or sixth. And then maybe we'll get some of those features back that we lost, maybe the widened status bar, or address bar and Safari and some other things with the maybe the live activity for the stopwatch and more. Hopefully we see those in future updates. As far as benchmarks, I did run one initially, but let's go ahead and run it and see what we get since it's cooled down a little bit. You'll see benchmarks completed and we have 2,904 for single core, 7,063 for multi-core. This is actually pretty good for single core, down a little bit compared to what we had with beta four, but it's processing a lot in the background. So we'll take a look at that on the weekend with the follow-up and see if it's improved.
Now, one other thing I wanted to mention is Apple apparently canceled its electric car project. This was announced today by Mark Gurman, and they're supposedly not working on this anymore and going to shift all of their production team to generative AI teams. So that makes a lot of sense. I'm glad to see Apple maybe focus on something else, such as their products, maybe really get everything right this time around and not have so many projects going on. Now, as far as anything else, if I find it, of course, I'll be sure to cover it in this weekend follow-up, and we'll talk about all the features when it releases to the public. If you've found anything else, though, I haven't mentioned, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already, though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.